Hi everyone! Soft pretzels are usually one of those foods I think of at the mall or the fair or let's face it, Disney. But I've never really considered making them at home because, let's be honest, they can be kind of a pain to make. Commercial bakers dip them in food grade lye, which for obvious reasons I won't be doing. But if you don't, then you don't get that super dark exterior. Now, I was watching an old episode of Binging with Babish recently, and he made pretzels and dipped them in a solution of water and baking soda. I know this is a technique a number of bakers have recommended, but I've never tried it, so that's what we're going to test today. Come bake with me. We're going to start by blooming our yeast. So I'm going to heat up two cups of whole milk. And he says to go to 110, which will take a minute. All right, it's been about three minutes and we're at 110. So we're gonna turn this off and dump in our two packets of yeast. One. Give that like a mild stir to break up the clumps, maybe, and let that sit for five minutes. All right, in theory, our yeast has bloomed. I did get quite a few lumps in it, so hopefully that won't be too terrible. Now we add in our brown sugar, flour, flour number two, flour number three, quarter cup flour, bread flour, salt number one, salt number two, melted but cooled butter, now we need for 10 minutes. Looks perfect. Just scrape the dough off the dough. Hook. And I have oiled this bowl with some just like neutral oil, vegetable oil kind of stuff. And it's a little sticky, but not too bad. I'm going to cover this and let it rise in my fairly warm kitchen for one hour. We'll be back. All right, I'm gonna make my what is this, baking soda bath. So I've got four cups of hot water and I just use my electric kettle. Oven's up to temperature. I just use my electric kettle to put it at 175. He doesn't give a temperature, but I decided that would be hot without scalding. I'm gonna mix that up. I, as you can see, used the same bowl that I had risen the dough in, because why not? Alright, set that aside and use that as our dip. I'm going to spray my counter here so that my dough doesn't stick. And then I'm going to try, I should spray my hands too. I'm going to try to roll this out and make a pretzel shape. I don't think I'm going to make them all pretzel shaped. I think I'll do some pretzel bites too. Because um, I actually prefer pretzel bites over pretzel shape. But I want to try the pretzel shape at least. Alright, and only having such a small amount of workspace kind of ensures that everybody will be at least be uniform. So we're going to twist, twist, 
and then fold. That's too small. Let's make this a little bit longer. All right, twist, twist, and then fold this guy over. Wow, this is hard. Okay, that's pretzel shape. It's probably a little small, but okay. This obviously needs to be closer. I'm gonna dig him in, and then ooh, that's hot. Take him out. Set them over there. Now we just repeat at nauseum. bad you don't know what they are. So that's something. Alright. The rest of these are going to be pretzel bites. I guess I could go get a ruler and make sure that these are all the same size, but honestly, I can't be that fussed about it. Just gonna eyeball it. As always, if somebody wants to complain, well, my attitude is you can make them yourself. When I was learning to cook, my dad told me that the chef got to make the rules and they could do whatever they wanted. And if somebody wanted to complain, then that person could cook for themselves. And I, I really adhere to that. these are gonna be so I'm hoping I'm not overcrowding all right I looked and I looked and I looked everywhere at my grocery store for pretzel salt and I absolutely could not find it so I am going with a very coarse grain kosher salt and hopefully that'll be good enough on the pretzel baits, I think I'm going to do half of them with regular salt and this kind of salt, and half of them with everything bagel seasoning because everything is better with everything but the bagel seasoning. All right, these are going into a 450 degree oven. Here are my final thoughts. These are great. Everything I want in a soft pretzel. The baking soda gives the pretzel a firm exterior while the inside is wonderfully soft and fluffy. The episode this comes from, Babish is trying to recreate the pretzel in the show The Office. Now, I don't actually need to give myself diabetes, so I didn't make any of the toppings, but rather served it with warm cheese sauce. But he does include the recipes for a number of the toppings he makes, and to be honest, they all look great. Probably you could make a few and have a do-it-yourself pretzel bar at your next party. A few important metrics. Is this recipe worth making at home? With one being Oreos, totally not worth making. And five being chocolate chip cookies, totally worth making. I'd say this recipe is a five. These are definitely worth making at home. Can or should this recipe be made in advance? With one being a souffle, absolutely not. And five being fruitcake, will literally keep forever. I'd say this recipe is a two. They were fine the next day, but the day they were made, they were the best. How hard was this recipe, with one being instant pudding and five being the multi-layer death by chocolate cake I might make someday? I'd say this recipe is a four. Honestly, my issue here isn't making the dough, which was probably a one, very easy. It was shaping the pretzels. I don't think I got my ropes long enough to make a good pretzel shape, but as this was my first time ever trying to do so, I feel like they were at least recognizable as pretzels, and with practice, I'm sure I'll get better. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. 
If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I upload a new video every Friday. And hit that like button if you liked it. If you have a recipe you'd like to see me try, please put it in the comments. And I'll see you next week.